I'm Robert Brady. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon with Ortho Connecticut. Work primarily out of Norwalk Hospital and Yale New Haven Hospital. Today we're going to be reviewing one of my single position lateral cases. Uh, this is a woman who has a pretty typical degenerative spondylolisthesis of L45 with severe spinal stenosis both centrally and foramenally at L45. So I think this uh, procedure works uh, for patients who uh, again have both central and foraminal stenosis, allows us uh, to deal both with back pain and the radicular component, uh, uh, you know, and, and allows us to do this in a more uh, efficient uh, manner. What you see here is positioning of the patient in the lateral, uh, putting them in the lateral position. Um, I like to visualize the patient on the table. Um, what we're careful here and what we're looking at is, is making sure that they're far enough anterior to allow the belly to, to hang to get out of the way of the lateral procedure, but they're posterior enough uh, so it does not interfere uh, with the placement of uh, the downside uh, contralateral screws typically on the right side. Here you can see draping of uh, the G Excelsius GPS robot that uh, is going to be brought into the field. So here you see us, our placement of uh, the DRB, uh, usually uh, place that on you know, the upside. Uh, I typically like to use the uh, low profile uh, uh, DRB. Uh, they have a small, they have a option between a small, medium, and uh, large one. Uh, typically I'll use the, the medium one. Uh, you may use the large one if the, the patient's uh, body habitus uh, requires it, but usually you can use the medium one and that will uh, allow the DRB to register uh, with, the, with the robot appropriately. Here you see to make sure that the, uh, the markers are off of the patient. We do uh, make a little mark uh, to ensure that that doesn't move. Uh, here is a uh, placement of the surveillance marker in the, op in the opposite uh, crest. Uh, if the patient, you know, if the patient's not amenable to uh, placement on the downside, you can also place this on the upside as well. Uh, I, I would recommend if you're going to do that, you, you do it through uh, a, a separate uh, uh, small incision. So here you can see us uh, getting our APN lateral for both L4 and L5. Uh, you can do this uh, as a surgeon because this, this is draped sterilely, or uh, you can also have uh, your uh, uh, robot representative do this uh, on the iPad. So we're registering, uh, we're basically merging our intraoperative fluoro shots that we have with the preoperative CT scan uh, to see uh, you know, how accurate our, our merge is. Again, you can see uh, these are our, our preoperative plans. Here you can see the, the movement between the AP and lateral, uh, and what you're looking at really is the end plates uh, at uh, the level that you're looking at here. We're looking at L5, and you just want to make sure those end plates uh, are, are matching up um, between the preoperative CT scan and uh, intraoperative fluoroscopy. So, I believe we're, we're pretty happy with uh, with that. Uh, you can see the the number six here represents how how closely we're merged uh, between the preoperative CT scan and the intraoperative fluoro. Uh, six is a is a pretty good number. Any anywhere above uh, above five is is you know five to ten is 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 typically accessible. Uh, uh, a successful merge, but again, you want to verify, you know, the end plates here. Okay, so once we are happy with uh, the verification uh, at each level, 
uh, we'll bring the robot into our field. Uh, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, place the end effector uh, onto the robot. Again, we'll bring in the we'll bring in the robot. Make sure it's uh, positioned. What we're looking for here is that uh, those red markers at L4 and L5 will turn to green. That will that will tell you uh, that the robot will be able to place uh, each uh, each of those screws in a in an accurate position here. So you have three greens. We're looking we're looking to get that L4 uh, on the right. So we'll, we'll move the robot in a little bit more. May have to end up raising the table uh, to get that uh, last one in. And there you can see uh, we've raised the table and we're able to get all four of them green. Now, uh, here is when you, you know, select the, the first uh, uh, pedicle to place it. So you can see the L5 on the right is, is lit up green. We, we place the pedal, uh, place the pedal. Uh, here you can you see the incision. Once you make the incision, uh, which typically I'll go through the end effector, and then I may expand the, uh, the incision uh, with uh, with another uh, ten blade just to um, lengthen the incision slightly more. Uh, then you can see this is insertion of uh, the drill uh, through that same trajectory. And we uh, use the tap. Here you can see with the use of, of the Excelsior GPS robot, we eliminate uh, the, the use of, of a guide wire because we can go right to the, right to the drill and we, then we uh, transition to the tap. Here you can see on the, on the screen, now our trajectory really is matching up very well with our uh, preoperative plan. Now you can see placement of the pedicle screw. Uh, again, if you if you look, look on the screen, you can see uh, how it's uh, matching the trajectory of our of our screw is of our screw that we're introducing is matching up very well with our preoperative plan. So you you keep uh, you know sometimes once you, once you're screwing, especially if you get good bite. You know, you may you may see that little red mark. Um, here, you'll see a check uh, on when the screw has uh, matched up to your preoperative plan, uh, and, and then you can uh, remove your uh, uh, introducer. So that's our first screw, and then we will uh, select uh, our second screw. Uh, place your foot on the pedal. And then you can see the robot then just moves into its uh, second uh, uh, trajectory. And again, you can see you know, how this allows us to do this uh, through a uh, minimally invasive fashion. The, the, we can plan, we make our preoperative plan to cross the screws so that gives you a, a much smaller incision. You can see our, our incision is probably less than uh, 26 millimeters. So now we're introducing the, the L4 uh, drill. Again, we're, what we're doing is we're uh, merging our interoperative uh, um, trajectory with, with our preoperative plan, uh, and you can you can see how we're, by just small movements we're able to uh, visualize you know where that trajectory is going. So once you're happy with the, uh, the depth of the drill, take the drill out. Uh, again, simple steps, you drill, then you're gonna go to you know, the tap. You're, you're again eliminating the, the use of the K wire uh, because, uh, because you're 
sure that you have the appropriate trajectory. This again also eliminates the use of cannulated pedicle screws uh, to uh, doing uh, more traditional uh, screws, which also will uh, save you time and save you money. So we'll tap. Remove the tap, and then we'll introduce the, the second uh, screw. Again, you can see we're doing the, the downside first. That's typically the, the, the much more difficult and sometimes impossible side to do, um, you know, using biplanar fluoroscopy with the use of the robot you can see that we were able to uh, uh, place these screws, you know, really very easily. Um, you know, you can uh, change your trajectory also interoperatively. Let's say that your screw is a little bit, um, the trajectory is a little lateral and you're hitting the bottom of the table. You can go back to the preoperative plan, interoperatively adjust that trajectory to more medial uh, position um, uh, very easily. Uh, but you know, for this patient, we our, our preoperative plan was really uh, pretty spot on, so we didn't have to do any interoperative uh, adjustments. Uh, but these are this is the those are this is the side that people have the most difficult uh, difficulty with, and you can see that we place both these screws within you know five to seven minutes uh, very easily. So we'll select the next screw. Uh, typically, I'll, I will start at the bottom screw, work my, uh, work my way around in kind of a, a, a circular position. So now we're doing to the left L4 side, gets our trajectory, we'll make our incision and we'll proceed you know, as we did uh, you know, on, the, on the right uh, downside. There you can see we're just expanding our incision slightly. We know how, how smaller incision needs to be based on the on the downside, so we can kind of make that similar, you know, 26 millimeter incision on on the on the left side, you know, right away. Once you make your incision, it is it does helpful to use you know another uh, uh, blade to get through the fascia, uh, or or else uh, sometimes that soft tissue will get in your way. Again, we go, you know, we have our trajectory. We're going to go right to uh, use of the drill. We can see our trajectory uh, matching up, you know, perfectly with our, our preoperative plan. Move our drill. We'll go right to the tap. Again, matching up uh, really pretty perfectly with that uh, preoperative uh, plan screw. Now, as far as setup, you can see, you know, we we uh, will set up our our robot on the same side of. Um, uh, of the placement of the screws, your your scrub technicians are going to be on the opposite side. Uh, you know, if you do have uh, you know, an assistant uh, that wants to place the pedicle screws on the upside, uh, sometimes I will have my my uh, assistant on that contralateral side. You know, place the the screws. But here, you know, this patient, uh, you know, you can see it's very easily done from uh, from. Uh, uh, placement of, uh, from placing placing the pedicle screws on the so same side of the robot. The key here is to make sure that you're not you know interfering with uh, visualization of uh, of the of the guides and of the DRB uh, with, uh, with the camera. So now you can see we have uh, three of our uh, screws placed uh, you know, rather quickly. Now we're gonna place our last uh, pedicle screw. So we have, we're going to the left uh, L5, puts this in the position we've already 
we've already expanded our incision to that uh, 26 millimeters, but we'll we'll cut down the fascia uh, a little bit more to make sure that there's no real interference with the soft tissue. Again, we have our trajectory. We'll go right to the right to the drill. And here you can see the screen. Sometimes you, you, you it will be blocked off. You won't see the, the implants, and that's because you're interfering with uh, with the DRB. So again, making sure that you know you or your assistant uh, isn't interfering with the with the DRB is, is is key. That way they can vis you know the the robot can visualize it. What we're doing is we're just realigning. Sometimes what you do is if you're you feel like you're off, you'll just put press your foot on the uh, you use the foot pedal again uh, to ensure that you're in the position. Here you can see with the uh, with the use of uh, the drill how we're kind of holding it up uh, upside down. Sometimes the weight of the battery of the drill will, will throw off your trajectory. So. You know, when you place that the drill in, sometimes you'll have to hold up that bat that battery to get it in the best position. Here you can see your your uh, again matching up your your tap with your preoperative uh, trajectory. So this looks like it's in going in a, a very good uh, uh, position here. Once you get through pedicle and half the vertebral body, you're, you're, you're pretty satisfied that you've gotten in a position that's going to introduce the, the pedicle screws uh, appropriately. Here you can see again, yeah, so when we visualize it, visualization gets blocked, the, then the implant gets blocked. Now we're placing our final pedicle screw. Here we're just trying to visualize. Uh, again, you can see how that's matching up uh, very well uh, with our uh, preoperative uh, plan. You can see uh, occasionally there's a little red screen that pops up that uh, that will show you you're using excessive force. That's if you're retracting on the skin, or sometimes if, even if you're getting you know very good placement of the the screws, uh, may, that may ind indicate it. So now we've gotten all four screws in. Uh, we can, uh, you know, take out the robot uh, and uh, uh, proceed. Uh, typically, at this point, you know, what I will do is I will uh, test the pedicle screws to allow their to make sure that they're in the acceptable position uh, with the EMGs.